In this video, I'll demonstrate one way to publish a hosted map service from ArcGIS for Desktop to ArcGIS Online. If you have an ArcGIS Online subscription, you can publish from an ArcMap document like we'll do in this example, or even from a text file straight to an online map layer that anyone in the world can access. No special software is required. The publishing software and the output service are hosted in the Esri Cloud. The published service will show population density for Los Angeles County, California. If you want to follow along, we've published the steps as a tutorial in the Getting Started section of the ArcGIS Resource Center. To follow along, you'll need a licensed or trial version of ArcGIS 10.1 for desktop at any of the three license levels. Membership in an ArcGIS online organization, full or trial subscription, and publisher or administrator rights within your organization. Keep in mind that the key to publishing is not the publishing itself, which is fairly easy, but knowing in advance what it is you want to publish. This means careful data preparation, so you don't waste time and credits having to redo things. So publishing is a three-step process. One, prepare your data. Two, publish. And three, evaluate it in ArcGIS Online. And the most time-consuming and important step of the process is step one. The rest is follow-through. All right, let's dive in. Here's a map document I've got on my computer. If you do the companion tutorial, you can download this data as an ArcGIS map package yourself from ArcGIS Online. So let's take a look around and see what this data is all about and from where it was actually derived. I'm going to select the Identify tool, which is this blue circle with the eye inside, and click anywhere inside Los Angeles County. A window appears and I get a value representing population per square mile for that location. If I click some of the lighter areas, I can deduce that these are the more densely populated areas of the county. Toggling off the density layer in the table of contents reveals that this is the area around downtown Los Angeles, which makes perfect sense. So far, so good. Now, I won't get into the technicalities of how this layer was derived, but I can show you this source layer of block centroids with a population value for each block in the county. That was the original source data used to create the surface. So this is an interesting data set, and is stored in what's called a raster layer. Rasters are cell grids. A digital image, like a satellite photograph, is one kind of raster layer in a GIS, but there are lots of others. Basically, anything you can store as a measurement or statistic. Like in this case, population density. We have one density value per cell, or pixel, and each cell in this case represents about 100 square meters. Before I publish this density layer as a service, I want to symbolize it here in ArcMap in a color scheme that is more visually pleasing and informative than the current black and white color ramp. In ArcMap, I double-click the name to open the layer's properties. Here, under the General tab, I will replace the current name with the words Population Density and click Apply. Next, I click the Symbology tab, and then here on the left, I click Classified. By default, the data is divided into five classes according to what's called a Natural Breaks classification but I want to set up my own classes, so I click Classify and then choose Defined Interval. Here, I'll delete this value and type 2500 and click OK. My data is now grouped into seven classes with each class having a range of 2500. So basically, all the cells with population density between 0 and 2500 will be one shade of a color, and cells between 2500 and 5000 will be another, and so on like that. Now I'll deal with the color. Up here, if I right-click the color ramp, I can toggle out of graphic view and see all the color schemes listed by name. I'm going to scroll down and choose the one called Cyan Light to Blue Dark. When I'm done, I'll switch back to graphic view with another right click. When I click Apply and move the dialog box, I see the result. Much better. Next, I'm going to format my labels. I'm changing it in the rounding area so that no decimal places are showing. The reason being that Showing any decimal places at all provides more statistical precision than is appropriate for this data. Now I click OK, and I'm almost ready to publish. I'm now removing the block centroids layer. I don't want it in the map service. I'm also removing the base map layer because base maps are already part of the ArcGIS online system. The system won't even let you publish a hosted map service with a base map. From up here in the File menu, I can access the Map Document Properties dialog. Entries in the Title, Summary, and Description fields are all required before I can publish my service. For my title, I'll type the words Los Angeles County Population Density. Under Summary, 
type population density in Los Angeles County for 2010. In this case, there's not much else to say about this data, so for description, I'll just copy and paste what I had for summary. Finally, we need some tags that will aid in keyword searches. I'll type the words density, population, and Los Angeles. Now we can close the map document's properties and save the map document because I'm ready to publish. Up here under the ArcMap file menu, I choose Sign In and enter my ArcGIS Online username and password. Now I go back and choose Share As and then point to Service. I confirm that I want to publish a service and that my connection is set to my hosted service with my organization's name. I've got to give it a unique name so I'll append my name to the service name. In the service editor, I click Capabilities. I'll leave it set as Tiled Mapping. So let's just pause for a second here to talk about why I would use a Tiled Map service instead of a feature service. We typically use Tiled Map services for large data sets that would tend to slow down the system if we attempted to render all the features in vector form. So as an alternative, the Tiled Map service gives us a collection of pre-drawn map images or tiles that draw fast. Not only that, they're drawn at numerous different scales so that the appropriate amount of information shows at each of the predefined scales. So getting back to the service editor, I'll drop down to the caching section here on the left, and over here on the right panel, I'll accept the default tiling scheme called ArcGIS Online slash Bing Maps slash Google Maps. Now you can definitely choose different tiling schemes for hosted map service, but the advantage of choosing this one is that your service will line up perfectly with other services in those systems. In the Levels of Detail area, I'm going to move the slider to change the maximum scale level from its default value of 17 to level 14. This will preserve publishing credits by building the cache at fewer levels. In the left pane, I click Item Description. Here, you can see that the summary, description, and tags entered earlier were carried through. Okay, now I'm ready to analyze my service and make sure there are no problems. I click Analyze, and after a moment, the results show up down here. Neither of these messages requires any action, so I'll go ahead and click the Publish button. This is a fairly large data set, so it'll take a few minutes to publish. After a few minutes, I get a message telling me that the service has been published successfully. I can now come over here to the Catalog window and see my newly published service under My Hosted Services. Now here's something interesting. If I right-click immediately on this service and choose View Cache Status, I get a message saying that only a certain percentage of my files are present. This is because it actually takes a little time on the server side to generate all the tiles. I'll click Refresh Status a few times, and eventually I get the message that the tiles are 100% present. Now I can leave ArcMap and go into ArcGIS Online to see how my new service looks. In my organization, I go to My Content, and here I can see my new service along with a service definition file of the same name. The service definition file contains the map, data, and publishing details. You'd use this if you wanted to transfer and publish the service to a machine running ArcGIS 10.1 for server. But that's beyond the scope of this exercise. I click the map service name to open the map service details. The first thing I want to do is specify who I want to be able to use this service. So I click Share, and I'm going to share this with the public so I choose everyone. Then I click the thumbnail to open my service in the ArcGIS.com map viewer. The service displays on top of my organization's standard base map, which in this case is the Esri topographic base map. This population density layer is useful in and of itself, but its real strength is how versatile it is. You can use it in a web map with other layers whenever you want to compare the distribution of some kind of places in relation to population. There are a few things to understand about this hosted map service. For one thing, it retained the two layers from ArcMap as sublayers. Also, other than making it partially transparent, you can't re-symbolize a map service layer. The legend labels showed up just the way we saved them in ArcMap. Now, I have an idea that I'd like to compare my data to known toxic release locations. I know my organization maintains this as a layer, so I'll come up here and click Search for Layers, and then I type a few keywords. Sure enough, I find this one called LA County Toxic Release Inventory, and I click Add. This service has some extra sublayers that I don't need, so I'll just toggle them off in the Contents window. Now, I click the Legend button, and lo and behold, I've got a map that actually tells a story. It's good that toxic releases don't happen in the most populous parts of the county, but at the same time, 
there's a lot of toxicity around. So the citizens of LA County might really want to have a look at this map. Therefore, I'll go ahead and save this web map. Once I share it with the public, I can send a link to citizens and other stakeholders. So there you have it. You've seen how to take a raster layer from ArcMap, symbolize it, and publish it as a hosted map service in ArcGIS Online. I also incorporated it into a web map with other data to create an interesting map story. Thanks for watching.